Now that we've discussed inverse trigonometric functions fairly extensively with a lot of examples, let's talk about the idea of the calculus behind these. And we're going to start with derivatives. And for the six basic trig functions, these are their derivatives. And this is sort of the chain rule version. Instead of arc sine of x, it's this arc sine of u, where u is a function of x. So the derivative of the arc sine function is 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever it is squared times the derivative. So if this was arc sine of x, it would just be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. But in the case where it's uh, some extra function, the chain rule says it's 1 over the square root of 1 minus that something squared times the derivative of the something. And the arc cosine is the same thing, except it has a negative. For the arc tangent, instead of these square roots, it's 1 over 1 plus the something squared, again, times the, its uh, derivative by the chain rule. Versus, now if we go down here, the arc cotangent, it's a negative 1. So it's the same thing, but with a negative. And then for arc secant, it's 1 over the absolute value of the thing that you took the derivative of times the square root of that thing squared minus 1 times its derivative. And then the arc cosecant is the negative version there. So, you know, what you really have are three separate formula with negative versions based upon whether or not you're dealing with, you know, a sine or a cosine in there. And, uh, I mean, obviously we could go through where these come from, but I want to do a simple case just for the sine function to kind of show you how we develop these derivatives because there are a couple of ways to do this. One is the limit definition. You say, look, if I don't know what a derivative is, I can always go back to the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, and I can just develop this thing from the ground up. And there's probably a pretty nasty but possible way to do that for these arc functions that um, you could do, and you could use a lot of techniques. But one of the well, probably the better way to do that is to use that technique that we developed to discuss uh, derivatives of inverse functions. And that's this, uh, the, there is a way to do it where you do like one over f, uh, you know, you do like one over f prime at the inverse of that. And that's a way to do that too. But I kind of wanted to show you the idea with a chain rule at where this comes from it, because this is probably the easiest I say easy, it's both straightforward way to think about it. So I'm going to, instead, if I want to find the derivative of the arc sine function, I'm going to think about cosine of arc sine. It might be natural to say I'm going to deal with sine of arc sine, and, and that's, that's perfectly fine to do as well, and this technique would work if you did that. But if I do cosine of arc sine, what I have to do is I have to construct a triangle where we know that if this was like a y, then y is, is a sine of y is equal to x. So opposite over hypotenuse is x. So that's here. If we solve the remaining uh, leg of the triangle, we get the square root of 1 minus x squared. By doing that, we then can take the cosine of that angle to get adjacent over hypotenuse, which is this expression, square root of 1 minus x squared. The reason we want to do that is now I have an expression here and I have an expression there and I can take the derivative of both sides. So if I take the derivative of this piece, I have cosine of something. So the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that something times the derivative of that something, right? That's just standard chain rule. But we know that the sine of the arc sine, that's an inverse function. So sine of arc sine is just x with that dangling negative on the outside. So now we have negative x times the derivative of the thing we want the derivative of. Again, we want the derivative of arc sine of x. Okay, so now we've taken the derivative of this half. We need to take the derivative of that half. Now, you know, that's a standard algebraic derivative. We've been doing this a lot. So if you take that derivative, Hopefully by now you're comfortable enough with the techniques to find out that that is the derivative of the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I have what's on the left and I have what's on the right and they're equivalent. So I know that this expression equals that expression. And what I notice is that both of them have a negative x in common. So if I cancel the negative x's, I get that the derivative of arc sine of x 
is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which matches what we have here. In the case where that was just x, this derivative would vanish, and that would be the square root or one, the square root of 1 minus x squared. So all the others follow a very similar pattern. You just have to be careful with how you do it. And uh, you know that would be a great challenge for you yourself if you wanted to really see if you understand the techniques. But other than that, we're going to do some examples using this table of values to um, you know, just to become comfortable with taking those derivatives.